Geronimo! Welcome back to The Order, you Doctor Who enthusiasts. Today we're taking a look at the 11th Doctor's Sonic Screwdriver by the Celestial Toy Store. We'll take a look at the packaging, everything you get inside, and lastly, we'll run through all of the details of this frankly beautiful Sonic Screwdriver replica. If you enjoy this video, it would be amazing if you could leave a like and subscribe. Help a veteran get a warm meal. Geronimo! The 11th Doctor's Sonic Screwdriver is a firm fan favourite, with its unique flickable extending emitter and green bulb. Unfortunately, finding a high-end replica these days is pretty tough. Rubber toe replicas are completely out of stock, and realistically, the ones that I've seen on the aftermarket as the most available are the Universal Remotes by The Wand Company. Enter the Celestial Toy Store. That's right, they're still taking orders, and this was with me in just under two weeks. So let's take a look at this thing. To start off, it comes in this absolutely delightful metal case. Opening up the case reveals the Sonic screwdriver. The Sonic is contained in this carrier by this custom cut foam. And then down here in the corner, you have your issue number because this is a limited edition run. The plaque is removable. It's all very nice, completely metal and it's got these lovely Gallifreyan symbols all over it and it of course gives you your issue number. But CT have been very clever in their use of space and underneath the plaque you have space for your additional spare batteries but also this extra bulb which allows you to use the red setting. In my hand I have to say the feel on this bulb is a little bit rough but I'm sure once this is screwed in place it's going to look absolutely fantastic. That's enough about the box. And then we get to the piece to resistance, the screwdriver itself. And this thing is just gorgeous. Installing the batteries is super easy. You just unscrew the bottom bit of the pommel. Oh God. <laughs> my sonic screwdriver. Burn out my sonic screwdriver. I have my sonic screwdriver. What's the bad alien done to you? Butterfingers. <laughs> One day I'm going to be careful with these things. Then you take your little 12 volts, I think it's 23A battery, uh, whack it in there, screw this back in place. Oh, no more mishaps. There you go. This is made from 100 precision engineered components, the purest copper, aerospace aluminium, resin and lambskin leather to produce this incredible replica of arguably the most complex sonic screwdriver seen to date. The most notable resin piece is probably this section of the handle here, with the rest of this being pretty much made of either brass or aluminium. First thing to note is this Sonic appears to be based on the Season 5 version used by Matt Smith, and I say that because CT has included this bottom flap which gives you the red button or red core, whatever is it? <laughs> red core bit, doesn't do anything, but it's a nice little bit of detail. As you can see there, I'm actually having a problem keeping this open and that's no bad thing. And that's because, yep, it's magnetized. <laughs> this thing is firmly in place. There we go, it's staying open. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Curse you, Sonic Screwdriver, you make a fool of me! <laughs> the cream handle section is very nice, it's very smooth, and it's very comfortable in the hand. Nicely as well, this cream handle is actually removable, so it has a little grub screw here, which means if this gets damaged, or if it gets really dirty, because you're using this all the time, you are able to replace that section. Moving up the screwdriver, the leather around the grip is just gorgeous. It's really soft lambskin leather, and the stitching is really tidy, and that's something that I was a little bit concerned about because that's gotta be a very, very hard section to get done right. At the base of the leather section, you have a micro switch, which feels very robust, not gonna break, it's easy to use, and the leather has actually been worked around that very, very nicely. And again, it's just a really tidy job. Well done, CT. Good job. Really good job. Moving up the Sonic, the rest of the sort of emitter section here and the copper juxtaposed with the silver aluminium just looks absolutely fantastic. You have these little sort of nubbits here, which are, I think, replica rather than actual screws or anything like that. They're there purely for a cosmetic effect. And then at the top of the emitter, we have the claw section. Now this is usually a bugbear because most producers don't get the claws very tight. But here, as you can see there, I'm, I'm not able to move these at all. If you compare that claw to the claw on 
a toy version. I mean, you can see there just how much you have to move the claws on the toy to get it even remotely on par with what CT have done here. No comparison. <laughs> just to give you the comparison on the bottom. <laughs> Ridiculous. Good job. Quickly testing the electronics in its closed function. Nice and bright. It has a white LED, so it relies on the green of the bulb itself to actually produce the colour. Potential scope for a gripe that the bottom half of the bulb doesn't seem to light up in the light at the very least. In terms of the sounds, this Sonic uses the original BBC SFX sound file through a brand new, totally redesigned sound chip, so it's not using the character options chips that you sometimes see Rubito using. There's only one sound with this. There's no hidden features or anything like that, so don't try and do any kind of weird combos. But something that's particularly nice is you can extend this while you're using the electronics. Didn't get a full extension there. <laughs> Slightly concerned. I'm gonna hit the table. Let's try it again. There we go. Close to the table, isn't it? <laughs> ah, super squeaky bum time. But that's a really good bit of functionality that some of the toys and some other replicas do lack. Such a satisfying sound. All of that's lovely about the electronics and the aesthetics, but let's face it, the only thing people care about with this is the flick. <laughs> it's not a wand, what am I doing? You're a wizard, Harry. All right, you gotta put some kapow into this. Nope, not enough kapow. <laughs> oh, it's a semi. <laughs> Come on, gotta be more aggressive. You've gotta want it. I'm still not, what the hell am I doing? Stop, stop, stop. You're going to take someone's eye out. Right. Oh my goodness. Curse you, Sonic Screwdriver, you make a fool of me. <laughs> right, basically, I haven't left myself enough room on camera, so I'm gonna have to really wind up. It's actually really hard to get that to extend, which is good. I, you know, you want it. You don't. You wanna? No, because <laughs> it's not working. It's not doing it. Okay, I need more space for the flick, but you can do it with the thumb. You've got to thumb it hard. <laughs> One, two, three. There you go. FYI, as I understand it, that the original intended use and the way that this was going to pop up was by the thumb. But Smat, Matt, but Smat? <laughs> Matt Smith was having none of that. So there you go. There we have it in its extended form. And in all seriousness, jokes aside, the flick function on this is ridiculously satisfying. It's nice and secure, so it's not going to accidentally pop open. It also means you can, in theory, toss this around in its closed form. I might try that in a second. <laughs> we all know. We all know I've done PE. Oh, no! <laughs> Geronimo! Oh! <laughs> Flick! Yeah! Nailed it! <laughs> oh! Hello! <laughs> Oop. Smooth. <laughs> I just... Geronimo! Yes! <laughs> The sounds on the extender are particularly satisfying. Punch. Very nice. In its extended form, you can see the green core, and I'm actually astounded at how nice that is. I'm not sure if it's coming across on camera, but it's got these sort of rich veins going through it. And then up here, further up the emitter, you have the remainder. Now this bit actually seems more solid than the lower bit. And then you have the bulb itself. Now. A little bit disappointing on the bulb that there's this white kefurfen at the bottom of it, but I'm being nitpicky. <laughs> there you have it, and it's in extended form. Lovely jubbly. To close up the extension, you have to pinch all four of these together and then close it and try it again. Pow! <laughs> there we go, it worked. <laughs> What's really nice is that the springs have enough weight on them so that when you put this down, it doesn't collapse. 
So you can have this if you wanted to, I don't think you would, but if you wanted to, you could have it on display like that. And the springs have got enough fight in them, not too much fight that they feel like they're gonna break, but enough fight in them that they're secure. They're not wobbly as well when you're, you know, when you have this open, they're gonna stay in the position that you want them to. The other nice thing is there's very little give when the prongs are. I think I've got one that's slightly more than the others maybe, but for the most part, these are all very, very, very secure. Just a really good bit of quality control. I said before that there was an extra bit of functionality, which I think, if I'm right, I should be able to just screw off the green bulb and replace it with the red one. So now we have our red bulb. I'll show you that in the dark so you actually get a feel for it. If you're wondering what this is like size comparison wise, it's a real entertainment toy and there you have your CT replica. Pretty decent sizings. So can I honestly recommend this as being a necessary purchase for Doctor Who fans? Yeah, very easy answer to that question. The quality on this, the build is fantastic, the attention to detail is superb. There are a few niggles and a few bits of imperfections, but I really don't see it being a big issue. So for me, CT has smashed it.